Hello everyone, this is Ichuta, and today I wanted to show you a little bit about how to get started in Elite Dangerous. This is a game that I just picked up not too long ago. I have been holding out because the $75 price tag has been a little steep for me recently, but um, I decided after watching a few really awesome videos of what people have been doing in this game that I can't hold out any longer and I ended up getting it. So if you haven't noticed already, which for the people that are um, just starting out you probably haven't, I am not in a starter ship right now, but I am going to show you a little bit of, about how I got into the ship that I am in now. I am in the starting city, I am docked up right now in the starport, um, Azaban City, and I am about to launch and show you exactly how I got the money to purchase this rather awesome ship that's kind of a multi-role. It's called the Cobra Mark III, and it's based off of the uh, ships that used to fly in the original Elite games that I never really got a chance to play, but this is by far my favorite ship that I've flown so far, and it is not cheap. It's about, I think, it's like 140 something thousand credits. So it takes a little while to get the money together for this. And I have done it twice now from nothing. The first time I did it by trading and that was okay. It took me about a day to get the money together. This last method I used, I'll call the, uh, the Manly method because it is based loosely on Scott Manley's well it's based pretty pretty well on Scott Manley, Manley's video which I will link um, but essentially we are gonna go hunt for gold and the best place to do this because all items that you um, pick up in space are automatically marked um, what do you call it uh, they're already stolen, I guess. So when you pick up these items, they're marked stolen, and you can't sell them to regular traders. You need to fence them on the black market. And that means that you need to have a contact to the black market. Now in Azaban City, I don't know of any. I don't think that they have put any in. But if you navigate from the Aranin system to LP98-132, you will be in a system with Freeport, which is an uh, anarchic, I guess would be the word. Yeah, it's 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 ruled by anarchy. So there's a it's a little more lax in that system to uh, find um, to be able to get into the start the uh, starport and be able to um, sell illicit goods. Let's say. Um. So right now I'm just jumping to that system, and um, I plan on doing another video later on that will kind of go into the subsystems and show people how this game really works, but you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing by watching the screen. Now we are in the uh, LP98-132 system, and I am going to lock on Freeport here, and I will find it and start traveling towards it. Now what you're doing is you are basically just waiting for random events to generate. And these random events are called unidentified signal sources and you will see them, they'll just kind of be floating um, floating points in space that don't really have anything around them. They won't have like a planet like you can see those are planets obviously. There's a big circle bright circle in the center and I'm just checking my my uh, little scanner here every so often to make sure that I haven't run across one already that I can't see so when you're doing this oh there's one right there when you're doing this initially you will be in a sidewinder the nice thing about the sidewinder is it's free and you really don't like if you get if you get caught by a bunch of pirates or something there's nothing to lose so I have found this unidentified signal source. I've locked onto it and I'm just gonna travel towards it and drop out of hyperspace. I'm, well, it's called super cruise, but it's essentially a hyperspace kind of thing. This is hyperspace, uh, 
light. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not like um, interstellar hyperspace. This is uh, interplanetary, so you're only going only a few times the speed of light, maybe 15, 20 times the speed of light, because that's super slow and totally realistic. But it does make um, it does make traveling around in the systems a lot easier. Anyways, as you can see, we're coming up on this system, or this uh, un unidentified signal source, and I am safe to disengage, so I will do that. And I will wait for my systems to pick up whatever is in here. So as you can see on my radar, there's a couple people above me. Um, it looks like they are some sort of... There's a Sidewinder for sure, the other one I can't quite pick out, make out. But this is obviously not what we're looking for. What we are looking for is free-floating gold. So I'm waiting for my frameshift drive to uh, charge, and we will just hop on out. Now, in the video that I linked, um, Scott just kind of hangs out around on on hit on a hit I can't remember exactly how it how it's spelled on a hit on a yeah he just kind of hangs out and sits next to it I've found that I get more signal sources by flying around outside of the system so that's what I I kind of like to do but I mean his system does work I just feel like it takes a little bit longer so what you once you find this gold source pretty much there are two scenarios there's either it's just free-floating gold you just pick up as many as you can and then you return to the to uh well you go to freeport and and fence it the other scenario is that as you're picking up the gold a pirate will drop into your instance and basically attack you and try and try and kill you so you need to be very um, cautious when you do these um, instances. And where you can tell is the, the comm system will show you what the uh, pirate is saying, and as well as the info will say that you have a new contact. So we're dropping into another one of these unidentified signal sources, and we will see, oh, it looks like just another couple couple of guys. These ones are well-defined. Cobra Mark Threes. If anything, they will attack me, so I am not going to deal with it. I'm just going to wait for my drive to come back online and then get out of here. There we go. So as you can see, it's a it's pretty much just a waiting game. You have to spend the time. It doesn't take that long, though. Especially compared to trading and more legitimate ways of getting the money. This is by far the quickest. Because each uh, ton of gold, the, the standard basic unit is a ton. Each ton of gold is worth 4,500 and something credits. And in your basic Sidewinder, you're able to carry up to four of these four tons of gold. Now, what I did to help speed up the process is after I got, I think it was something like 25,000 or something, something like that. Anyways, after I got a significant amount of money and enough to buy a hauler, I did that. And you can do that in Freeport. There's a shipyard once you're docked and that will, that hauler helps you a lot because it effectively quadruples your storage space. You're now able to use four times, or able to hold four times the amount of cargo, which is good because a lot of these encounters will come with something like eight to 10 tons of gold. So in a Sidewinder, you can only pick up half of it, and it kind of sucks because you just have to like let the rest of it go. But once you get that, um, that hauler ship, you are able to actually pick all of it up and that sped up the process quite a bit. So it only took me about two hours to get um, to. It only took me about two hours to get enough money to buy one of these cobras, and 
now I am able to do legitimate trading where I can make, you know, 10, 11, even $20,000 per trade, depending on what my starting capital is, which is not a lot right now. That's kind of why I wanted to do this. Totally screwed that up. I wasn't paying attention to my speed at all. All right. And there's my cat walking by. <laughs> All right, nothing here again. So this is this is really just not a productive session that I'm having here. And I mean, really, it is all just up to dumb luck. Sometimes you get lucky, and the first, the first um, Drive charging. signal source you find is is full of gold. Sometimes gold. you. Three. Wait out here for 30 minutes trying to find anything at all. There are a couple other resources that you can stumble across in this area. I don't know how... I haven't really done too much signal hunting in this game yet, but there are other resources that you can find in this area. There is Bauxite, Coltan, and Explosives. Those are the other three that I've seen. Now, bauxite is absolutely worthless, and Scott will tell you about that. It's worth like 10 or 20 credits per ton. So, if you ever find bauxite, you just immediately jump out. It's not worth the trouble, and just forget about it. Now, with the coltan and explosives, there is some value to those. They're, they're worth maybe, I think it's something around 200 for each ton. So even in the Sidewinder, there's you get almost a thousand. So it's worth at least picking it up. Um, there's a source. But definitely with a Bauxite, I would not... Yeah, I got kind of screwed in that one. I'll just have to circle around. But um, definitely with a Bauxite, you don't want to hang around. Just get out of there. Find another signal source because you're just going to waste your time bringing that into port. Let's see if this has anything. If this one has anything good... Oh! We found gold! Look at that, guys. So... Now that we... have found some gold, and if I can learn how to pilot like a real person... I'm a terrible pilot, guys. Sorry. It's... I know... I know how bad this is for anybody that actually plays this game. <laughs> but, you know... You do what you can. I need to... I don't care if I'm going back. I need to eject this. Alright. So... Oh, great. <laughs> I just picked up the, the box I, that I just dropped. Alright, get out of here. Alright. So I'm just gonna line up here with the... Uh, I don't know why it's giving me that bug. It keeps telling me the cargo scoop's deployed. But I'm basically just going to slowly come in. And when you see those red lines and that annoying alarm, that means you're going too fast. And just kind of line up. This is a nice long string of gold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically just pick up one by one each piece in the line. And my impact sensor is going off, but I know because I am trying to pick up some stuff right now. And I destroyed it because I missed. Again, brilliant piloting by me. Um, we'll try this one more time. Let's see here. T. Come in. Coming in a little slower this time. I don't want to destroy another canister of gold. That's 4,000 credits down the drain. You do want to be very careful about this. Luckily, there doesn't seem to be any pirates in this system. Or this, uh, this signal source. So, I seem to be in the clear. There we go. Acquired that one. Now we're getting somewhere. One day I could be a real pilot. Um... Let's see here. What's closer? 
That is 546. That is 553, so this side is closer. I still don't really understand the radar sometimes. It definitely gives you funny... Um, it makes things look kind of odd. Not in the right place, you know? Alright, let's come in nice and slow. And perfect. It's almost like I knew what I was doing. Alright, let's line all of these up. See, now I'm in a nice... I have these all lined up. I am going to find the closest one, which I think is... No, that's not it. Where is it? Oh, there we go. That is definitely the closest one. 200 meters out. You can go nice and slow. I'm going to rotate this way. Just so it's easier to pick up the next one. And I'll just target and move on. And this is definitely the most efficient way to get this done. But it takes a little bit of prep time getting, getting everything lined up right. And we just slowly pick up the money. Now, since I have acquired this gold, I will show you the process of fencing it. Whoops, I screwed that one up. Wow. You know, I did this a bunch of times with no problems at all, but as soon as I start recording, totally screwed it up. So... I guess I'm not as good of a pilot as I thought. There we go. It was sloppy, but I did get it. Now you... Oops, wrong button. I've noticed that there is a bit of a bug if you have just acquired some tar cargo and you try to target another item, you won't get the uh, nice sound effect telling you whether or not you're on target. Uh, I'm sure the devs are working on that, but for now we just have to deal with it. See, just like that. There was no, no sound effects at all. So now we'll just do a check quick of my contacts. There are no contacts in range. I picked up all of the gold and destroyed some of it. And I can now navigate to Freeport Whoops, what did I do? Oh, I must have turned away. I will lock and super cruise, and using my reticle, I'll probably go off that way a little bit so I don't get into the, the uh, planetary gravity well. Um, oh yeah, my scoop is still deployed. <laughs> That's something you need to remember. You need to pick up that cargo scoop as soon as you're done, especially if a pirate's attacking you. First thing you do is pick up the cargo scoop, because you cannot go into the uh, the super cruise mode with the cargo scoop deployed, which is fine with me, it's just you need to know that and not be an idiot <laughs> like me. Um, I see that unidentified cargo source, and I want to get it, but I am certainly afraid of the fact that it's probably just pirates, and if I got picked up, picked off now, it would be pretty disastrous, so I am just gonna go to Freeport. I'm not gonna, not gonna mess around with that signal source. Alright, now that we are in, we are around Freeport, I'm going to figure out which side the docking port is on, which I believe is that one. Let's lock it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure it's on the other side. You can always kind of move around in space, and as you can see on the targeting computer, the model is changing, so there we go. The docking port is directly opposite of the way that I'm facing and I will just reverse wow 
this ship does take a while to slow down. That's probably why I crashed it into the port in the first place. But I'll just reverse. And then go into flight assist off and flip my ship around. That way I know I'm heading in the right direction. Sometimes it can be tricky to assess which side is is uh, has the docking port Oops. on these stations because they're not there's no like good indicator and we will kind of come around and boost in another trick you can uh, use is when you have your assist off you can see up there with the light your maximum speed can be held instead of having to constantly fight the uh, assist computer the flight assist computer so if you boost you won't um, slowly lose uh, lose all your speed to the flight assist computer trying to like help you out I don't know if this is a bug or if this is something that's going to stay for good, but it is good to use right now at least. So now I am going to try not running into this space station. I will put out my landing gear just to swing it down a little more. Take this nice and slow. I've learned my lesson. 34 is right here. Alright. And we'll just come in nice and slow and land. And then I will show you how to fence these stolen gold canisters. Pad loitering? No. Wait. Why did I think 34? I am pad 21. Wow. Do not game when you first wake up in the morning. Jeez, this is this is really bad. All right. Now that I'm actually going to the right landing pad, we will slow down and drop down a little bit. Oops, a little far. There we go. Very nice. So, you'll just go into the starport services here with your illicit goods, be they gold or bauxite or whatever you're selling that was gained at a uh, less than legal, in a less than legal way. And you're going to go into the contacts. Now, I suggest sometimes when you have special things like weapons or armor, especially things like battle weapons, you can fence these in the uh, bulletin boards. Sometimes people... I don't see one right now. Sometimes there will be people of less than uh, legitimate repute looking for things like that. Personal weapons, battle weapons, alcohol, things that are generally illegal. But since there isn't anything like that, I'm just going to go to contacts. And then there's my black market contact. I want to sell illegal goods. And... Oh, I picked up that box site again. I'll sell that. See, it's only 10 credits. It's really not worth picking up. But the gold here, with 9 units, I'm making 41,000. And if that were the full 10 units, which you can get in a in a simple hauler, you will make even more. I think it's something like $45,000. So, 45,000 credits is going to help you immensely. And it only took me, I think it was three or four of those and I had enough to buy this Cobra Mark III which I am now flying and I'm going to space truck around in until I have enough money to outfit it properly and feel safe about crashing it. Alright so I hope this video was helpful to some of you guys. I definitely plan on doing a lot more videos on Elite Dangerous. Star Citizen is in such an early state right now that it's it's hard to really get into just playing arena mode over and over again, even with the capture the core that they just added. It's just not enough to keep me around. 
I definitely will be doing some stuff on uh, PvP and stuff later when I finally have a real ship to play with. But for now I think I'm going to do a few trading missions and kind of give a rundown on how I do trading to make really good profits. And then if there's anything in particular you guys are interested in, let me know. I mean, maybe you want to know about bounty hunting or smuggling or whatnot. So I'll definitely be more than willing to look into things and produce a good video about it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.